Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. The Casio Edifice range has not had much love on this channel. I have now made 760 videos, precisely two of them have been on Casio Edifice watches. The first was the original Cassie Oak, that's what I called it anyway, an octagonal cased Casio Edifice that actually predated the infamous G-Shock. Great watch if you don't already have 12 different colors of the G-Shock in your collection already. The second last year was a watch that I described as the Casio Aquaterra. Very, very handsome, beautifully proportioned little watch in quartz, well under $100. Now, I buy and sell a ton of watches for review on this channel that little edifice is still very much part of my collection. I put a new battery in it last week, it's gonna be ticking accurately and reliably in my watch box or on my wrist for two years or more now. Hence my most recent purchase, it's Big Brother, a 42 millimeter chronograph version of the same watch. Again, I bought this one for well under 100 US dollars. Not without its drawbacks, it's a big brand Japanese chrono for less than 100. There are certain limitations that we should expect at those prices, but I think this one is a handsome big watch, more than makes up for those limitations. Let's flip the camera and have a look at it. So I'm gonna start with the basics today, dimensions, etc. before running through some of the positives, the things that I like about this edifice, and then I'll talk to you about some of the limitations. There are a few, but nothing is gonna surprise you here. It's all pretty much what you'd expect for a watch at this cost. So what is the cost? How much did I pay for this one? And where did I get it from? Well, I bought it from a shop called Tic Tac Area, and I'm not even joking. I believe they are a Spanish company, but this one seemed to be shipped to me from the Netherlands. As you can see here, I paid 128 Aussie dollars. That's roughly 70 pounds, roughly 95 USD, though obviously depending on taxes, etc., that may vary for you. I think it's about the sixth or the seventh watch that I bought from these guys. Service has been fantastic, highly recommended. I'll leave a link in the description of the video. And indeed, it's the same shop that I bought my white dialed Casio Aqua Terra from about 12 months ago. Now you can see that they are from the same model range, same handset, same indices, very, very similar case shape. And the case shape is really one of the standouts here as well. Similar model numbers also. They're both EFV 560s, but the chrono is a 560D-1AV. UEF, also available in blue. I believe there's a black with red accents available on a leather strap. There is a silver one, but I couldn't find a white one. It was white I was really looking for. So it's a proper full-size chronograph then for well under 100 US dollars, 42 and a half mil in diameter, but because it's quartz, nice and slim, bang on 12 mil thick, bang on 50 mil lug to lug, check that curvature of the case. Definitely a highlight of this one. Unlike the rather awkward 21 millimeter lug width. So if you are in for one of these, have a good think about whether you prefer a bracelet or you want to go for it on that leather strap. Nice taper though, down to 17 and a half, back up to 19 and a half at the clasp. Size that for me, seven inch wrist. Again, because it's quartz and because it is economically viable, shall we say, a little lighter than you might expect for a 42 and a half. This one weighing in at 123 grams. All stainless steel, three piece case. Fixed high polished bezel and a screw on stainless steel case back. 100 meters of water resistance from this one, but no screw down crown, just a push pull crown. I guess what would be the point of having a screw down crown with non screw down chrono pushers? Lovely, lovely case profile, nice case finishing as well. So we go from brush to high polish to brush to high polish again, not bad for a watch at $95. Also, edifice logo on the crown there. The bracelet is no worse, but certainly no better than you'd be expecting from a big Japanese brand for this money. Have a look at the polish there, have a look at how the light reflects in it. It's not great. Brushed outer edges though, and at least it has an inverted female end link here. So, sizable watch, 50 mil lug to lug, but wears very nicely on me. Cheap clasp, again, as you'd expect, but it does have the edifice logo stamped there. Logo at the bottom and four holes of micro adjust. The little three-hander plus date that I showed you earlier only has two, one of the major drawbacks with that one. This one at least has four. I get a great fit with it as a consequence. The case back is nicely etched again with the Casio Edifice brand name and logo, but showing you it does rather reveal another one of those limitations, that being hollow end links. Quartz chronograph module number 5451. And no surprises with how this one operates. Six hand plus date, three central hands, three sub-registers, and the date at three o'clock. 
Now the top register is a 24 hour indicator, a somewhat useless complication, but it does rather balance the dial out. Top pusher to start the chrono, and it is the small sub register down there at six o'clock that counts up the seconds. 30 minute maximum chrono timer, and it will just keep on going and going and going if you don't stop it within the 30 minutes. One more push of the top pusher to stop, one push of the bottom pusher to reset, and it's a slow reset. So if you spun for 10 minutes or so, it will spin all the way around for another 20 minutes till it makes it back up to the 12. And because it's part of this Edifice 560 range of watches that kind of looks like an Omega, I think it looks pretty handsome. Nice carryover handset, nice indices as well. Three registers, but I think they've balanced out that smaller register at the nine o'clock well with the date complication that isn't color matched. I think it's good that it isn't color matched on this occasion and the brand name, the brand logo and WR100 meters just printed on a high gloss black dial, balancing out that dial nicely. That little bit of yellow is once again picked up on the tip of the second hand. And once I zoom in a little bit closer, you can see the hands are all very cleanly cut. High polished silver surrounds to them with a bevel down the middle also. And there we are, if we go right in, you can see how clean those hands look under my macro lens. You can also see it's a curved bevel to the date complication at the three o'clock, nicely molded there, and some concentric circles in those silver rings surrounding each of the three sub-registers. The larger indices that make way for the three sub-registers are all nicely clipped. It looks neat and tidy again. One thing that my camera cannot show up, very hard to identify this even with a loop, is that around the outer edge of the dial where the minute track is printed, there's a little bit more concentric circle work there. A surprising amount of detail then for a watch costing this little. And on wrist, it wears very, very well indeed. Dead flat case back as discussed, and look at how nicely those curved lugs point in, narrowing the watch, integrating well with the bracelet, meaning it sits nice and flat and flush on wrist, only 12 mil thick at the best of times. I do like the taper in the bracelet, even if it's not technically the best bracelet in the world. Overhead legibility is pretty good. I think it's a good size of dial because it is a fairly slim bezel. But bear in mind, high poly silver hands, high gloss black dial, there are gonna be circumstances when it lets you down, particularly as I don't think there is any AR coating on the underside of that mineral crystal. It's not too bad when you get it outside in some natural light though, and you can see some of those nice details with the little clipped indices and some of the concentric circle frames around the three registers. And on wrist, the 21 mil lug width may be rather awkward if you do intend to swap this one onto a strap, but it does make for a rather elegant profile overall. 42 and a half down to 17 and a half at the clasp is a nicely elegant taper. And when you look down the wrist, look at how little gap there is underneath my wrist there, thanks to those female end links and those curving lugs. Pocket shot to finish, good size and good proportions from this one overall, I think. But limitations and a fair number of them. Several do pertain to the bracelet. It is pretty cheap and rattly sounding. Thanks to the hollow end links. These are hollow links, though they do disguise them rather well. Push pins I'm not complaining about. Press clasp is kind of okay, but overall, yeah, the bracelet is weak. And let's zoom back in on the dial again. I've got a question for you. The ticking second hand is the large central hand. The chrono timer is the small sub register down there at six. Who would swap them over? so that the fact that this was quartz was far less obvious. I think I for one would swap those over and I would make the central hand, the chrono timer hand, and the sub register at six, the ticking second hand. And while we're on the subject of those two sub registers, the ones at six and nine o'clock, have a look at the markings. It's only marked every five seconds and it's only marked every two minutes, meaning you're gonna have to put a bit of effort into reading the chrono if you're gonna be using it regularly. Less markings admittedly equals a cleaner look, but yeah, you do sacrifice a little bit of at a glance functionality as a consequence. And then there's the loom. This watch very much fits into the sub $100 loom tradition, i.e. it's rubbish. They've only bothered looming the hands in the first place. There's no loom whatsoever on those rather attractive indices. And when I turn the speed up, you can see it's pretty hopeless. But overall, an economical big brand chronograph that looks good and wears very well. Definitely one of the best looking edifice chronographs out there. If you need a chrono or you just need a bigger watch than the 40 mil that is available with this Aquaterra-esque three-handers, they do a 35 and a 40, this one should definitely be on your potential shopping list. Perhaps they will expand the three-hand range and make a 42 mil version using this case, but until that happens, you're stuck with a chrono. 
So there you have it. Well done for making it all the way to the end of the video. What are you going to watch now? I recommend watching one of the other two Casio Edifice videos, the real Cassie Oak or that cracking wee white-tiled Aquaterra. Thanks for watching. See you again soon.